You're listening to episode 110 of the Smaller Supercharged podcast with Rhea Freeman. Well, hello and welcome to today's podcast with me. It's a solo and it's an exciting one. I feel like I'm quite excited in my voice Um, because today I want to talk to you about Instagram stories because if you're listening to this in real time, just I want to say 10 days ago, I launched my Instagram stories course, which is a digital course. You can study at your own pace. It's really good. I'm really proud of it. I know blow my own trumpet, but I'm really proud of it. And if you're listening in real time, it's actually on a special offer introductory rate for the month of June. If you aren't listening in real time, it's absolutely still available. There's going to be a link in my show notes, and it's also in the bio on my Instagram and it's also on my website but even at the full price it's an absolute steal but it is on an introductory rate so if you are interested in improving your Instagram stories go there but we're also going to talk about Instagram stories today because I love them. If you follow me on Instagram you will regularly see me doing an Instagram story often when I'm attempting to walk the dog. Um, I do this because when I'm walking the dog I don't have a screaming child attached to me or I'm not trying to break up to break up the children or feed the children or water the children or deal with a dog or the television's not on. So it's a time when it's quiet, um, which is a win. But also it's a time when I think and I can talk about things that I, I want to share with my followers because to me Instagram stories are an amazing way of connecting with your followers. And to me, one of the best ways to do that is actually on a walk because I am outside, so I don't have to worry about the background, because we all know what it's like, especially if the children are at home, or you've got a wayward dog, or a slightly messy partner, Um, you know, you get there, you turn your phone on, you hold it up, you start talking, and then you realise there's a, in my case, a stuffed toy in the background, or there's a glass from last night, or something like that, And although I would say 100%, if you start doing an Instagram story and you see a stuffed toy in the background or a glass from last night, crack on because it is real life. And that's one of the beauties of Instagram stories is that they capture real life. And I think that the best ones I watch are these authentic, unfiltered, unedited ways to show real life. And that is the slightly messy background behind you. Um, So I, but I do say I much prefer to do them outside. A, I pretty much prefer the background because I love where we live. We live in the countryside and I love it. And I actually really like being able to share that with people on Instagram stories. You know, a beautiful sunset, the sheep. I'm obsessed with the sheep and cows around here and the the lambs at the right time of year, Um, the calves at the moment. I really like being able to share all that. I love being able to share the view from the back of the church where I walk because I think it's really special and it allows me to let people into my world a little bit more so they get to see what makes me tick. And if we think about any of our social media platforms, we are allowing people into our world to find out more about us. And part of that is what makes us tick. It might be your horse, your dog, the scenery of outfits that you love you're sharing your passions your loves with people and that can be all sorts of things and for me the scenery the places I walk is a really big part of that another benefit of walking when you're doing stories is the light is usually a lot more flattering because natural light is definitely the best Um, if there's bright sunlight that can sometimes be a bit hard work because you know you look towards it and you're blinded and you have your back to it and your face is black but generally a nice overcast day and let's be honest if you're listening in the UK um, we have quite a few of those so that is generally a good shout so there's a lot of benefits to filming outside the main negative just if you're thinking about doing this is the wind noise can be quite vicious so if there's any wind um, it can really mess about with the microphone and make a really horrible I'm going to do it, noise, but louder, and I don't like listening to that at all, and when I'm watching things back, when I'm adding my subtitles, uh, it, it drives me mad, I'll delete a whole set because of that, so that can be your only negative, although 
honestly, most of the time it's fine. Most of the time it's fine because you can either make sure the microphone is shielded from the wind. Sometimes there's no wind, you know, occasionally there's no wind. You can make sure the microphone is shielded from the wind, but also you can do things to improve it. So I usually walk and do stories. If I stop walking, it gets better. If I make sure I'm turning with my back to the wind to just record the stories I want to do, it gets better. So there are ways around it, but it's just something to be aware of if you're going to do a talking story, because I do like a talking story. But today I thought I would share with you five Instagram story ideas that you can do now. And of course, if you've done the course, you will know all the different functions and how you can do them. Um, but regardless, these are solid, good ideas that you can go out there and you can try on Instagram stories now and give them a good go because they're all really good ideas. And also there are ideas you can do more than once. So the first one is something I've sort of touched on a little bit. Actually, the first two are, is behind the scenes. So when I'm walking the dog, I think I share the behind the scenes. I share the countryside I see when I'm walking. I share crazy hair. I share what's going on in my world that I'm not necessarily putting as a grid post somewhere. But you can go further than that. You can share behind the scenes of anything. It can be how you get your horse's turnout to look so good. It can be your routine. It's the stuff that we don't see on the grid that necessarily makes your grid or feed post what it is. It could even be the behind the scenes of a grid or feed post because what you can do with stories is you don't have to post in real time. If you spend ages faffing about trying to get a flat lay to look really nice, you may have filmed a behind the scenes of doing that, of gathering up the bits, of wrestling a toy off the dog that you wanted to put in your flat lay. Record that, use that as stories, you don't have to put it up in real time. It can be behind the scenes to so much though, and what I'm actually going to do is I've got a little freebie that I'm going to put in the show notes of this website with five Instagram ideas that you can use now, and this is one of them. Behind the scenes is one of them. It is an idea that we can all utilise, that we all have access to, that is easy to use and doesn't require any further prep than anything we already have. It can be fun, it can be serious, but the thing is it's unique to you because it's your behind the scenes. It might be getting ready to go out for the day because God knows that can take long enough. It can be anything you like, it's such an open-ended thing. Um, but behind the scenes is such a great thing to share. It really helps people to get to know you better, your thought processes, what makes you tick, all of that. The next one, as I said, this is also connected with the way that I do stories is sharing a thought. So when I do an Instagram story, believe it or not, I always have a thought that I'm going to share. I don't just go on and see what happens. I do have a point I'm trying to get to. You may feel like it's a long way off in the distance sometimes because I do get very distracted with calves, cows, sheep, traffic, anything. And gosh, if I see a horse, it's a game changer. But sharing a thought is a good one. So often what I'll do is I'll explain the thought behind a grid post. So if it's a quote, I'll explain why I picked that quote, what that quote means to me. If it's Podcast Wednesday, so today I will do a story about this podcast and I will explain the thought behind the podcast, the thought behind why I'm doing a podcast on Instagram stories. I will explain in Instagram stories, which it feels like a full circle if ever I saw one. But you can share a thought about anything. But when you go on, you've got your up to a minute speaking if you just want to do a, you know, your face to the camera story and it'll record that in one hit for you. But share a thought or an idea. It might be something that you are deeply, deeply passionate about, something that at the fibre of your being matters to you. It could be a thought on a rule change if you're into any kind of sport. It could be a thought on a campaign. It could be a thought on the way that something's being handled. It could be a thought on your outfit of the day, the colour of your hair, the fact that you've got a real lockdown hairdo going on. It can be a fun thought, a serious thought, a thought that really causes debate, a controversial thought, a non-controversial thought, 
an inspiring thought. It can be whatever you want that thought to be. But stories is a brilliant platform to put it on because people can see your passion, your emotion, your thoughts in it. When you speak, it comes across. And stories is such a brilliant, brilliant way to capture that. So as I said, it could also be just a thought about why you have posted what you posted yesterday or this morning or whatever. Um, And that's a lot of the time what I do. But when I come on to share, I do have a thought. I do have a thing that I'm going to try and get to by the end of my one minute. So share your thoughts on Instagram stories. It's a brilliant way to do that. The next thing is a how-to or showing a process. And you can have a lot of fun with that. There's loads of different functions inside Instagram stories and you can use whichever one you like or you can use external apps that create different styles of content that you can then import into your Instagram stories. And, you know, as I said, you don't have to do Instagram stories in real time. You can use a pre-recorded video that's saved on your camera roll or wherever you're going to save it and use that. So you can show a process or do a how-to. So this might be how to, let's go horsey for a minute, plait a mane, or how to get the most perfect plaits, or how to do a specific plait in a horse's mane. It could be how you get your horse's legs so white. It might be how you lace up your trainers, and I've actually watched videos on this, because there's different ways. Um, It might be how you cook your favourite meal, or how you make your legendary chocolate brownie, which I cannot make a chocolate brownie. I always go into cake. But you can share a how-to through stories. Even if it's a longer process like making a chocolate brownie, you can, if you want to, go into editing and chop it up and show different processes or say, well, actually, I've got four frames here that make up one story. Of course, you can do more than four. So I've got a minute. So in every 15 seconds, I'm going to share a part of that brownie creation. So how can I do that? And it can be quite a fun little challenge you can get going in your head. But showing a how-to in steps or through your Instagram story can be a really great way of helping to educate your audience around the things that you talk about, around the things that you do. Because what you'll also find is depending on the kind of content you share on your feed or grid, is that people will ask you questions. They'll ask you, well, how do you do that? You know, how do you subtitle an IGTV? How do you um, add a thumbnail to something? How do you do that? These are kind of questions that I get. Um, How do you subtitle Instagram stories? How do you do this? How do you do that? Well, actually, through a video, I can show that. Through an Instagram story, I can show a lot of the how-tos that I get asked. But you you might have a completely different audience that, well, you will have a different audience to me. We all have different audiences. Maybe you want to do how to style a T-shirt four ways or how to put together the perfect picnic for a social distancing picnic because that's what you talk about on your feed. That's what your audience like. That's what your audience expect from you. Maybe you want to do, oh, I don't know, a how-to of how you plan your week or a how-to of how you draw something if you're an artist. The options are honestly endless and they can be captured through stories. They can obviously be captured and told in other ways as well. But as today's focus is stories, stories is a really good way to do that. So a how-to on stories is a great little idea. The fourth way, and as I said, these are going to be as a free download in the show notes, um, or there's obviously a lot more context about this in the course, is ask an opinion. A poll is a really, really simple way to ask an opinion. You know, which do you think is best, the blue top or the red top? Do you like black saddles or brown saddles? Do you like egg and cress or cucumber sandwiches on your picnic? You can see I'm actually quite hungry as I'm recording this. Um, Ask an opinion. A poll is a really, really easy way to do this. There are other options inside Instagram that allow you to ask people's opinion and get their feedback. But a simple poll is the easiest way to do it and the fastest way to do it. Because you want to make sure that you are making it easy for people to engage on your Instagram stories. And a poll is an easy way to do that. 
obviously one of the stickers inside Instagram itself is the question sticker and I get a lot of spam through that although it has eased off recently but that takes another level of engagement because you're asking someone to actually type you a question which is going to take them longer whereas the beauty of a poll and you can change the answers to you know, yes no you can even change it to emojis you can change the words is that literally with a tap they have engaged they've got in touch with you they've given their opinion and they are moving on depending on what type of brand you are you can use this really well you could use this I mean brand or account you are you could use this really well it could be what you're going to have for dinner it could be which product they prefer it could be what kind of offer they would like it could be what kind of competition they would like to see next it could be which piece of customer user generated content they prefer and that would encourage that person to win a prize you could have it as a voting system like that if you wanted to um, or it could be which horse do they prefer that you own or who you know, which horse would they like to ride which top do they prefer um, which anything which is a question a poll is a great way to do it and they don't have to be serious this is the thing don't think that all your Instagram stories content or all your content at all has to be serious it doesn't it should be a reflection of you and you as a person you as a brand have got lots of different facets that I think it's really important to show um, Obviously, you have to be comfortable with whatever you share, but don't think, oh my God, well, I've got to be really straight laced. I've got to ask really, really serious questions. Some of the most fun polls I have seen, which I remember, are Abby Lyle, who, if you go back a few episodes, I recorded a podcast with her and we talked about this, is that she used to do like Woman Crush Wednesday and would and would put like gorgeous... Um, women of like of, of, in a woman crush wednesday voting situation well she also does like what bands do you prefer from the 1990s and all sorts of things so don't think it has to be serious all the time it doesn't we can all do with a laugh and as long as it is on brand and reflective of you and how you feel and you're being authentic and it fits with what you believe it would be random of me to do a woman crush wednesday post or even which brand you like from the 1990s because i don't really talk about either that much well i don't talk about them at all on instagram at all i'm trying to think um but for abby's account it's absolutely bang on it's fun because she does you know talk about things like that she talks about britney spears she talks about nsync and various other accounts I'm going to tag Abby when I put this out there about her polls. Um, we need to get more of her polls on the go. They're brilliant. I love them. I love seeing what people vote for as well. So, you know, make it fun. Make it on brand for you. Think about things that you love that you could show a, a different side to. So maybe you have got a favourite breed of dog, a favourite breed of horse. You know, would you like this in your yard? Yes or no. Would you like this in your house? Yes or no. Don't take yourself too seriously. A poll is a great way of getting to know your audience, of them getting to know you, and whether it's serious or a lot more lighthearted, I would really urge you to embrace it. I love a poll. It's so easy to get involved with a poll. And last but not, not least on these five Instagram story ideas that you can use now and that are in a free download in the show notes is what's new with you. And this can be so much this can be a new product that's arrived at your shop it can be a new product that has arrived with your brand it can be a parcel that you've received that you've bought and you're going to show us what's new it might be a new animal that's joined your family it might be a new piece of furniture for all it matters but again it's a lovely way and you can make it quite fun of sharing a new purchase a new addition to the family a new flower on your rose bush if you like it's a nice fun way of sharing something that's new and interesting and exciting and that you're happy about with your fans and followers and don't think oh I'm boasting I know I did a video oh gosh when was it 
it was probably, it was only a few weeks ago, I ordered an amazing bundle of stationery from Emily Cole, Emily Cole Illustrations, who is amazing, and I have to say, if you have bought the stationery from Emily, like I did, you will know the joy that opening that parcel brings. And I did a little, I did an IGTV, and then I also shared it to stories of the kind of unboxing, because when I opened the packet, um, the the kind of mailing packet inside it there was a bundle of stationery can't speak stationery wrapped in beautiful pink tissue paper with a large sticker of a snail holding it all together so I was hooked and I wanted to share that with people because my followers know that I am a big old stationery fan and I wanted to share my reaction to it um now, I should also say, if you are gifted products, you do need to declare that as well. So I bought the stationery from Emily, just putting that out there. If you're gifted stuff, fine, I, you know, that's absolutely fine, but you need to be clear that if you're doing an IGTV of an unboxing of gifted products, you need to say that that is gifted. They are the rules. Anyway, we need to do a full podcast on that at some point. So... I wanted to share my new stationery because I was really excited about it. I had purchased a planner with um, the dressage planner, which I've got sat next to me as I'm recording this. And indeed, Record Podcast is on it. And I also purchased um, one greetings card, which is the piebald, skewbald, poobald. And I also purchased an eventing notebook. Now, Emily did also put in a few cheeky small greeting cards for me, which was very kind of her and not expected. But I did also talk about that they were not, um, they were gifted when I was as a little freebie, which I didn't know about until I opened it. But the, the point of this all is that I could share what was new. I could share, I was really excited about it. I shared my new buy. I shared my new brand. Well, new the brand that I'd received into my house. So it was perfect as a what's new example. I could have done that in Instagram stories, but because I had a few things I wanted to get through and also opening packages one hand takes longer than you would expect. So I needed more than a minute to do that. But um, that was a really good way of doing it. The great thing about this as well is that it's, it applies to so many people. So if you are a blogger, an influencer, a vlogger, it's a lovely way to share brands that you love, whether you've been gifted the product or whether you have bought the product. It is a lovely way to show the new things that you love. If you are a brand and you have a new product, please share it on stories, please. Because if, and share it more than once, because if you don't share it, people don't know you have it. If you don't share that you are working with a brand and they have sent you some lovely things, the brand doesn't get any of the recognition that it would want from gifting you items and they won't get the the benefit that they were hoping for from working with you. So it's important that you share what's new. As long as it's labelled correctly, that is the key, but it's not here to catch anyone out. It's here to be genuine and just so everyone knows exactly what they're being shown, when they're being sold to, and when it is a kind of incentivized story for want of a better expression. But regardless, sharing new things is exciting. It allows people to get to know about new brands, about new products, about new cake, whatever you have in your What's New package, get it shared. And as I said before, if you want to do it in real time, you've got a minute's worth of video that you can record you could also do it in images you don't have to do video for all of these you don't have to do it in video you can do it however you want to do it but video is an easy way to share a lot of these things or you can do it with a still image and text or any of the functions inside stories a lot of them will apply to lots of different things here too But what's new is a really good little thing to do. It's a nice way of sharing new things with people. And especially if you're working with a brand or you are a brand, it's really, really important to do that. So that was a whistle stop. Five Instagram stories you can do this week. And I believe you can do them all. We can all do them all without leaving our houses. So again, thinking about um, if you are unable to go out because you're poorly, you've got 
you know, um, responsibilities at home, you are not going out because of, if you're listening to this in real time, coronavirus, whatever, you can do all of these from your house or garden. You don't have to do anything. And of course, you you can do it if you go, you know, when events are back on again, you can do so much of these things at events or getting ready to go to a show or anything like that. But the thing is, stories can be adapted to any situation that we are in when we are happy to share things and we want to share things with our audience. And they only last for 24 hours unless you save to highlights too. So again, another great reason to be unedited and to be natural because they're not going to last forever. They are only up for a day. So thank you so much for listening. What I would love you to do is do one of these things. Well, you know I always love you to screenshot, share to stories and tag me if you've listened and you liked the episode um, because that gets more people to know about the podcast and that is brilliant. I love that I've got some amazing guests in the pipeline for you as well and a couple of things I'm working on that I'm very excited to share with you. Um, But also if you try any of these things and I would love you to, tag me. I will do my best to share. If you tag me at Rhea Freeman PR and you also tag small dot and dot supercharged, um, one of us will share. It's the same person. It's just the accounts are slightly different. But please do share. I'll do my best to share on one or both accounts. And I would love to see you putting these five tips to good use. And just before I go, if you would like to find out about the Social Supercharged Instagram Stories course, go over to the show notes or go to the link in my bio on Instagram. It's in one of the Thinkific ones. It's really obvious. Or send me a DM and I will send that information over to you. Thank you so, so much for listening today. I really do appreciate it. I appreciate you listening. I appreciate you sharing. And I appreciate all your lovely DMs and kind words. They really really do mean an awful lot to me, especially when things get busy and it's, it is hard to record the podcast when things are really busy and I get you know, the odd half an hour here and there. Um, but I love it. And I really love being able to connect with all you amazing people each week. Um, it really does mean the world to me when I know that you're enjoying the content as much as I'm enjoying creating it. Thank you so, so much for listening and we'll catch up really, really soon.